Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to subtract negative fractions. Now this is going to combine knowledge of subtracting positive fractions and subtracting positive and negative integers. So we are going to combine those two things when we subtract negative fractions. So something to keep in mind. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have negative three-fourths minus one-sixth. Now, just like when we subtract positive fractions, we need a common denominator. So the least common denominator between four and six is going to be the least common multiple between four and six. Now, we may be able to think what that least common multiple uh, will be without writing out our lists of multiples for four and six, but just as a refresher, I will write out the multiples. So let's start with four, and again, we're looking for the least common multiple, so the smallest um, multiple in value that they share here. So we can count up by fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Now those multiples go on forever. So we can just write the first five and see if we have any in common. If not, we can always extend our lists. So six, 12, 18, 24, 30. So we are looking for the least common multiple. So the smallest multiple in value that they share. And that is going to be 12. So that's the least common multiple, and therefore it's going to be our least common denominator. So 12 here, and now we need to rename our fractions with that common denominator of 12. Now these are going to be equivalent fractions, so we are not changing the value of the problem at all. Let's start with negative 3 fourths. So how do we get four to equal 12? Well, four times three is 12. So whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So negative three times three is negative nine. Negative nine twelfths is equivalent to negative three fourths, but we renamed it with that common denominator of 12. Now we need to do 1 sixth. So how do we get six to equal 12? Well, multiply it by two. Whatever we do to the bottom, we need to do to the top to keep it equivalent. One times two is two. So now we have our common denominator of 12 and we have our fractions renamed with that common denominator of 12. So we are able to subtract. Now, just like when we subtract positive and negative integers, we can add the opposite. So let's add the opposite. Well, the opposite of positive 2 twelfths is negative 2 twelfths. Now we can add our numerators. Negative 9 plus negative 2 is negative 11. And we keep our denominator of 12. Always check to see if you can simplify your answer? Well, the only common factor between our numerator and denominator is one, so we are in simplest form, and our final answer is negative 11 twelfths. Let's move on to number two, where we have negative 5 fifteenths minus negative 9 tenths. Now again, the first thing that we need to do, we need to find a common denominator and the least common denominator is going to be our least common multiple. So let's find the least common multiple between 15 and 10. We'll start by writing out the multiples of 15. So 15, 30. Now you may notice that 30 is going to be a multiple of 10 as well, so there would be no um, reason to continue our lists if you either know the least common multiple off the bat and you can think of it, or if you find it while you're writing out your lists. Again, there would be no reason to continue on if you recognize that. I'm going to continue going and write out four multiples of each and then kind of go from there. So this would be 45 and then 60. 
So let's write out our multiples of 10 here. So 10, 20, 30, like we talked about, 40. So 30 is going to be our least common multiple. So I wrote out four multiples each for 15 and 10, and then looked for the least common multiple. Again, like we talked about with number one, if you do not see a least common multiple as you write out your lists, you can always extend your list. My suggestion, write four or five multiples and then go from there. So our least common multiple and therefore our least common denominator is going to be 30. Now let's rename. How do we get 15 to equal 30? Well, multiply it by two. Do the same thing to the top. Negative five times two is negative 10. How do we get 10 to equal 30? Let's do negative nine tenths. Well, multiply by three. Do the same thing to the top to keep it equivalent. Negative nine times three, negative 27. Now that we have our common denominator of 30 and our fractions renamed, we have equivalent fractions there. Remember, we're not changing the value of anything. These are equivalent. We are ready to subtract. Again, just like when we subtract positive and negative integers, we can add the opposite. So the opposite of a negative 27 thirtieths would be a positive 27 thirtieths. So let's add a negative 10 plus a positive 27 equals a positive 17. And we keep our denominator of 30 the same. Now the only common factor between 17 and 30 is one. So this is in simplest form and we are done, 17 thirtieths. Now there is one more thing I do wanna mention and it's about subtracting a negative. So for example, number two, we started with negative 5 fifteenths and we subtracted negative 9 tenths. We ended up for our answer with 17 thirtieths. So we increased in value even though this was a subtraction problem. Now that's because when you subtract a negative, you actually increase in value. You can think of it as subtracting or taking away debt, which is a good positive thing. So again, when you subtract a negative, you are going to increase in value. That's something to think about and keep in mind when working with negatives. So there you have it. There's how you subtract negative fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.